Chapter 9 to 10. Iruka, Naruto, and Hinata walked peacefully to Ichiraku's ramen stand, a thank you from Iruka for Naruto and Hinata saving his life. Iruka got injured by the shuriken rain but Hinata did a wonderful job healing them. Naruto, Iruka, and Hinata sat down at the ramen stand. Oi, oh, old man, come here I'm hungry, Naruto yelled. Oh, Naruto glad to see you and Hinata, Tuchi said and both nodded. Okay, since Iruka sensei is paying you can start with 10 bowls of pork ramen for me, Naruto said and Iruka widened his eyes thinking if it was a good idea offering him dinner. I'll take two bowls of vegetable ramen, Hinata said. I'll take one bowl of shrimp ramen. Say Hinata. Iruka said getting her attention, were you faking with Naruto since the beginning? Iruka asked. Of course, you actually don't know but we are boyfriend and girlfriend, she said giving Naruto a kiss on the cheek making the blonde blush. Who would have thought? Damn, you are some good actors, Iruka said getting chuckles from both of them. Why did you hide your strength even your relationship? Iruka asked. You know that I'm the Kyuubi Jinchuriki right? Naruto asked and Iruka nodded, and pretty much all the villagers and almost all of the shinobi hate me for carrying him. To them I'm a painful reminder on that night. You know that they tried to hurt or kill me many times. If the civilian council knew how strong I was they would do everything they could to stop that the demon from getting strong. He said. The reason I decided to hide our relationship was pretty much the same reason. They would try and hurt her as well. I've already heard some calling her demon whore, and I'll be damned if I would let anyone hurt her, I would faster burn this village to the ground than allow anyone to place their hands on her. So we decided to stay in the shadows until we were strong enough to protect ourselves, he concluded. Iruka was surprised how the number one knucklehead thought of everything. He would never in a million of years think the Naruto was so clever and insightful. You certainly fooled me, Iruka said and everyone laughed. They started eating calmly. And you Hinata, I get the feeling that you are not the shy girl, he said pointing to her. She giggled and answered. I was shy when I first met Naruto but over the years I grew out of it thanks to him. Also who did you think helped him in his pranks, she said laughing and Iruka jaw dropped. Actually I kinda liked acting shy and letting everyone else brag about how good they are. How strong are you really? Iruka asked in a serious tone. Well we've never matched against anyone other than ourselves but the furball says we are around jonin in terms of taijutsu and ninjutsu, I suck at genjutsu so around low chunnin in that. Other than that I'm level 10 seal master. Naruto explained and of course Iruka didn't even know what to say, poor guy. Wait, if you are jonin level how the hell can't you do a single bushin, Iruka asked and Naruto chuckled. Well, you see one side effect of having a bijou sealed in you when you are young is that you tend to develop large chakra reserves. I estimate I have about 4 times more chakra than Gigi so even though I have jonin level chakra control, I still have too much chakra to perform a single bushin. Naruto explained. Iruka didn't know what to think or do. The academy dead last was jonin level, had 4 times to Hokage chakra reserve and was a seal master, besides all that he had a matured Sharingan. Iruka did what he could do and fainted. Oh I oh I wake up sensei, you still got to pay up, Naruto yelled trying to wake the fainted Iruka. Hashtag hashtag council room hashtag hashtag. The Hokage was approaching a room. Standing near its double doors was an umbu guarding it. The umbu bowed to the Hokage and opened the doors. The Hokage entered the room and to his left were seated the clan heads of Konoha also known as the Shinobi Council and to his left were a few important civilians known as the Civilian Council. Near the Shinobi Council were also seated three people. They were Mitokado Hamura, Yudetane Koharu, and Shimura Danzo. They were former teammates to the Hokage in his Genin days and are currently his advisors or elders. The Hokage made his way through the room and sat in a small table in front of the Kanoha Council. Good evening to everyone. Now, may I know the reason why the council has been summoned? The Hokage asked in a bored tone. After dealing with all the paperwork he still has to put up with the damn council. Yes Hokage-sama, said one merchant of the civilian council as he stood up, we heard that the dem. Uzumaki Naruto graduated from the academy. You cannot allow him to become a shinobi, he's too dangerous, he said. The Hokage sighed he knew that this day would come. Naruto is not dangerous, he's already proven to be a loyal shinobi but also graduated as rookie of the year along with Hinata, the Hokage said and Hayashi raised an eyebrow hearing Hinata was Kunoichi of year. This year's batch must be weak, to think that she was the best, Hayashi thought. 
he's clearly a demon, he stole the Rookie of the Year title from the Uchiha-sama, a pink banshee yelled making everyone shiver from her freakish high-pitched voice. You should choose your words carefully Sivlian, the Hokage said raising his ki making her sweat, my law is still in effect. But Hokage-sama you cannot allow him near the clan heirs, he could hurt them all, a fat merchant said while the shinobi side rolled their eyes. Enough, the Hokage said in a serious tone, many of you civilians may not know but Naruto has already saved his village today, he said getting confused looks from everyone. As you don't know, today one of the academy teachers Mizuki, broke into the Hokage's vault and stole the scroll of seals. He was intercepted by Yumino Iruka and they engaged in combat. If Naruto and Hinata didn't show up Iruka would be dead and the village without the scroll. Hinata managed to heal Iruka and Naruto defeated a Chunmin. The Hokage concluded and everyone gasped. A fresh rookie from the academy defeating a Chunmin is almost unheard of. You see Hokage-sama he's already becoming too powerful, we must kill him now and finish what the Yandame started, the fat merchant said trying to reason with the Hokage and put an end to the demon. You keep forgetting that this is a shinobi village and I, the Hokage, am in command of my forces, my word is law, remember well. This meeting is adjourned, the Hokage said rubbing his temples. I'm getting too old for this shit, he thought as he watched everyone leave the room. Hashtag hashtag later that night hashtag hashtag. Later that night everyone in the village was sleeping peacefully including our favorite pair Naruto and Hinata. They were sleeping like usual cuddled together, Naruto had his chest pressed against her back pulling her closer to him. Two figures were seen dashing through the roofs. They wore the standard jonin outfit for Konoha. The high tie in the forehead, the jonin flat jacket and black umbu pants with white strapping in the ankles. So you remember the plan? One of the jonins asked getting a nod from the other. Let's get this over with so we can collect our pay, the other said and rushed towards the destination. They arrived at the red light sector and very quietly made their way into a house. The house itself seemed old with a few patched holes in the outside's walls. They approached the window and saw the sleeping pair, the demon and its whore. They decided to make entrance through the roof seeing that their bed was too close to the window. They quickly and stealthy entered the house and made their way into their bedroom. They were approaching their bed and one said, this is your end demon, and quickly drove two kunais through both of their chests. The jonin smiled in victory until there was a poof of smoke and reveled two logs with kunais, they turned around and didn't like very much the view. They saw a sharingan blazing and the byakugan activated. Oh the demon has the sharingan, he probably stole it when he killed the Uchiha clan, let's kill them, one of the jonin said and dashed to the pair. Okay, Hinata you take one I'll take the other, be careful they are jonin we might be skilled but they have more strength than us, Naruto said. Hi, she replied and dashed to intercept one of the jonins. With Naruto. Why are you attacking us? It's a crime to attack a fellow shinobi of the leaf, Naruto asked knowing pretty much the answer. You know partner to us, die demon, the jonin responded and took the kunai and slashed horizontally. Naruto ducked and using his foot he stroked the jonin foot making him tumble forward. Using his momentum Naruto lifted his knee and managed to strike him in the gut. The jonin quickly recovered and jumped back. Not bad demon, let's take this up a notch, the jonin said and quickly made a few hand signs and yelled, Dotan, Tsuchi no Yoroi, earth style, earth armor, and enveloped his body in strong earth shell. He's using an earth shell, good thing my main affinity is lightning, Naruto thought. They dashed forward and exchanged a few blows. Thanks to the Sharingan Naruto managed to block or dodge every single one of them, however due to enemy's armor his strikes were ineffective and he couldn't attack any pressure point. Naruto switched to his own Nintaijutsu style the lightning fist. Naruto charged his hands and feet in a coat of lightning chakra. He dashed forward and went for low kick, the jonin jumped up to avoid it. Naruto quickly recovered and sent a massive punch to jonin chest destroying his armor and sending him against a wall. That hurt you damn brat, the jonin yelled. They both engaged again but Naruto had the upper hand, deciding to end it and going to help Hinata, Naruto sidestepped a punch, and infused his fingers with lightning chakra and pressed hard against the jonin's head near the hair discharging the chakra in his vagus nerve sending the jonin to cardiac arrest. A slash n, by the way, the vagus nerve does exist and if pressed with enough strength messes up with heart's rhythm or something similar. I'm not a medic rather an engineer but I know a few things xd. Naruto left the jonin shaking in the floor and left him to go help Hinata. He turned around to see Hinata having the upper hand until she made a mistake and the jonin took the opportunity and went for a horizontal slash. 
Hinata, Naruto yelled, he deactivated his gravity seal and dashed at the top of his speed to help her, knowing that he wouldn't reach her in time he did the only thing he could and substituted himself with her. Naruto now in the place of Hinata was seeing the blade coming closer and closer, his Sharingan could be seen as a curse for it was showing his death in slow motion. He tried to bring his kunai to block the sword but it was too late, just as the blade was about to make contact Naruto unwittingly channeled a massive amount of chakra to his eyes until they started spinning and reversing its colors, suddenly everything became even clearer and time seemed to slow down even more. Naruto was watching the blade come closer and closer and just as it was about to make contact with his skin, the strangest thing happened. The blade continued in its path as if slicing cleanly through him but Naruto didn't feel any pain. The enemy Jonin didn't know what was happening, his blade seemed to phase right through the demon as if he wasn't even there. The blade left his body as if nothing ever happened, it was then he looked at his eyes. Instead of the blood red eyes with black Tomo's Naruto's eyes switched to being pure black and in the middle a glowing red cracked circle with three red orbs on it. The Jonin didn't know what it was but it was too late. A slash N, check profile for image. Naruto caught the Jonin's hand as it left him and broke his wrist making him drop the sword. Naruto looked him in the eyes, with his Sharingan spinning and said, Genjutsu, forced sleep, as he said the jonin fell to ground unconscious. Naruto turned to Hinata who was too stunned with what happened that she didn't even saw him approach. Hinata are you alright, are you hurt? Naruto asked concerned with her. I'm not hurt thanks to you, she said and hugged him and cried. I can't believe they would drop so low to attack us in the night, I guess I was too optimistic. Naruto thought. They separated until Hinata looked at him and gasped. Narukuen, your eyes, she said, Naruto didn't know what she was talking about and went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror and raised an eyebrow. What the hell is this? He thought. That kit is the next form of the Sharingan, knows as the eternal Manjiku Sharingan, you are very lucky to have awakened it. That particular eyes only awakens in life and death situations or through intense training, the QB explained. So that's why that blade passed right through me, it must be a power of it, he thought. I guess, but I never seen that one in particular. I've seen Madara's techniques using those eyes but I don't know how to use them so you will have to figure it out. Deal with the intruders, I'll explain something about those eyes later, the QB said and Naruto nodded and quickly went the jonin that survived and tied him up, placing a chakra restricting seal in him. Couple of minutes later the body of the dead jonin was sealed in a scroll that Naruto would later take to the Hokage, he picked up a glass of water and splashed it on the jonin's face awaking him. Hi there buddy, let's talk now, Naruto said in a sweet voice that sent shivers even to Hinata that had her Byakugan active to see if he would lie. Damn demon, I'm not saying anything you might as well kill me now, the jonin said trying to hide his fear at being at the mercy of the demon after trying to kill his lover. Where's the fun in killing you? Naruto said and activated his normal Sharingan and said, Megan, Jigaku Guka no Jutsu, Hellfire Technique, the Jonin was trapped in the Jinjutsu and felt like he was being burned alive, since he was tied up and had chakra restriction seal he couldn't break the illusion. This went on for a few minutes until the Jonin decided he couldn't bear it anymore. Oh okay, I'll talk, please stop, he begged until Naruto ended the Jutsu and looked him with his Sharingan along with Hinata checking for lies. Listen well, I'll only say this once, Naruto said with his Sharingan glowing making the jonin nod quickly. Why did you decided to attack us? Naruto asked, he wanted to know why all of a sudden they decided to take such a direct approach against him. It was a deal, me and my friend would kill you for a payment. The jonin explained looking at the corpse of his friend and thinking it was a mistake to accept it, but it was too late now. I see, and who requested the mission? The jonin hesitated in telling him who asked for the death of the demon. Naruto deactivated his Sharingan and locked eyes with the Jonin, his cold blue eyes that seemed to penetrate his soul made him flinch. It was Tuno Kanta a merchant of this village and belongs to the civilian council. The Jonin answered and Naruto already suspected it would have been one of the civilians with wealth enough to wire two Jonins. Hinata, he's telling the truth. Naruto asked and Hinata nodded. Naruto turned to the tied up Jonin and smirked. What are you going to do to me? The Jonin asked in a fearful voice, he didn't want any more pain, he preferred a quick death. As much I would like to kill you now I won't. I'm delivering you to the Hokage tomorrow morning with your friend over there and after that I'm calling for the execution of said civilian. Naruto said and went behind him and knocked him out with a quick chop the neck. What do we do now? Hinata asked. They were too pumped up to sleep now. It's 4 AM. The Hokage's office opens at 7 so in the meantime I'm placing a few security seals around the house to make sure this doesn't happen again, he said. 
Naruto went to Hinata and kissed her. He hugged her and whispered, I'm sorry, it's my fault. They were after me, Naruto said. He was sad and mad that the villagers would try to kill even her. It's not your fault. And besides, don't think this is enough to drive me away from you, she replied and gave him a passionate kiss. Thank you, Naruto said happy to have found the woman he would spend the rest of his life with. Naruto went to the walls and quickly placed security and privacy seals, and a chakra detector seal lock at the door. With his Kage Bushin it only took him around an hour to fully seal his apartment making sure that whoever tried to break in would have a nasty surprise. They both laid in bed with Hinata snuggled together until she fell asleep in the safety of his arms. This wasn't how he intended to start his day. Naruto drifted off to sleep and went to his mindscape to talk with the Kyubi. So Kyubi what did you want to tell me about my new eyes, Naruto asked excited to have unlocked the eyes that made Uchiha Madara so powerful. Okay kid, this is going to be long story so shut up and list well, the QB said and Naruto nodded. It all began a few thousand years ago. The human race was living peacefully among each other until one day a fearsome beast appeared. No one knows where it originated but it was too powerful for humans to defeat. Many thought it was a punishment from the gods. The beast itself had ten tails and was known as the Jubi, ten tails. Nothing seemed to be able to stop until a man appeared and faced the beast alone. The man managed to defeat the beast by sealing it inside his own body. He would later be known was the Rikudu Sanin the father of all ninjutsu. The man was hailed as a hero for defeating the beast and was considered by all a god among men. However he too aged and sooner or later came to his old age. Knowing that in his death the beast would be set free, he split its chakra in nine, thus creating what you know now was the nine-tailed beats, going from one tail to me, the nine tails. You are with me so far. The Kyubi asked, seeing Naruto nod he continued. During his life the Rikudu Sanin had two sons. The older son received his eyes and founded the Uchiha clan while the younger one received his body strength and was the progenitor of the Senju clan. In his deathbed Rikudu Sanin had to chose which of his sons would carry on his legacy. Due to the younger son's ideals he chose him, however this didn't agree with his brother. His older brother thought that since he was the eldest, it should be him to lead the world in his father's place. Angered at his younger brother and father he tried to fight his brother for the place but he lost. Having lost he realized that he needed to gather more forces and end the Senju line before it even began, but he realized that being alone it would take too long to build a clan so he did a blood ritual to transform, so to speak, ordinary civilians into Achihas. Okay the story ends here. You understood everything? The QB asked and Naruto replied, yes I think I got it. The Rikudu had two sons and older one did blood ritual to increase his clan faster so that he could defeat the Senju brother. That's right, now about your eye. You see the descendants of the older brother are pure-blooded Uchihas while the others that were born out of the ritual were known as half-blooded Uchihas. Nowadays no one even knows that distinction anymore. The key difference between the two is the activation of the Menjiku. If you were part of the half-blooded side you would have to kill someone close to you and experience the emotion of that loss in order to awaken it and, even after awakening it, as you were using your eyes you were constantly losing sight until becoming permanently blind unless you removed your eyes and placed in its place the eyes of your brother, father or someone directly related to you, in doing so you would achieve the eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. However the pure-blooded Uchihas achieved the Manjikyu differently. They activated those eyes in the heat of battle and in life and death situations and when they achieve it, it was already in its eternal form. The line of pure-blooded Uchihas was Uchiha Madara's line. Since he only had Minato and his brother didn't have any son that we know of, currently you are the last of the pure-blooded line. The QB concluded. Does that mean that one day my sons would be able to have the Manjikyu? Naruto asked. Yes. Since the Sharingan gene is dominant only one of the parents is necessary and you being pure-blooded, your sons would awaken the Manjikyu in its final form like you, the QB answered. It's good, I wouldn't even think about killing someone close to me for power. I have a question though. I've read that Madara stole his brother's eyes. Naruto wondered. You can't trust everything you read. He might have stolen them but he didn't need them, the QB replied. Now that I think about it, that Baka is constantly bragging about being an Uchiha and he isn't even pure-blooded, Naruto said laughing. Thanks. It's almost 7 am. I'll see you later, Naruto said and left the mindscape. Naruto got up and picked up the scrolls containing the two jonin. He and Hinata got dressed and made their way to the Hokage Tower to start the day by giving the old man a nice early, fresh headache. Hashtag hashtag Hokage Tower hashtag hashtag. 
The Hokage was currently leaning in his chair enjoying a cup of hot tea to jumpstart him in his paperwork. It truly was the nightmare of all Kages. Suddenly there was a knock on his door. Come in, the old Hokage said. The door opened and he saw an unhappy Naruto carrying two scrolls with Hinata. This can't be good, he thought. Naruto-kun, how are you doing? He asked. We are doing fine, better than these two in fact, Naruto replied and tossed the scrolls to the Hokage. Naruto, what is this? The Hokage asked. Open them and see for yourself, the Hokage opened both scrolls and saw it was a ceiling scroll. He channeled chakra through both of them and on the floor appeared a dead jonin while the other was tied up but awake. Naruto, what's the meaning of this? The Hokage asked in a serious tone. Naruto walked to the tied up jonin and removed the duct tape from his mouth and asked, would you do the honors, to which the jonin quickly replied. We were hired by Tuno Kanta to kill the dem, Naruto didn't allow him to finish the sentence and it sent him a cold glare with his Sharingan. The man gulped and continued Uzumaki Naruto. Jeez, what a mess. The other is dead I suppose? The Hokage asked and Naruto nodded. I had to end him quick otherwise Hinata wouldn't be here, he said and placed a hand on Hinata's shoulder pulling her closer. I should have suspected, yesterday council meeting was about you and didn't end well, the Hokage said sighing. At least neither of you got hurt. Don't worry Naruto the man responsible will be considered a traitor for attacking a shinobi and will be dealt with, the Hokage said glaring at the jonin. It was pitiful to see his shinobi fall so low that they would try and kill a fellow partner. You know old man, I actually find it funny, he said chuckling. Seeing the confused face of the Hokage he continued, they tried to kill me because they were afraid I would grow up too powerful and would someday attack the village. However they ended up giving me more power, he said activating the Sharingan and shifting into the EMS and showing it to the Hokage. And Naruto, is that what I think it is? The Hokage said with his eyes widened. Yup old man, I present to you my eternal Manjikyu Sharingan, he said smirking making his eyes spin. He started explaining everything he knew about the pure-blooded Uchihas and the activation of this eye. The Hokage had his jaw on the floor while he was processing everything he heard. He snapped out of his stupor and said, so that means that Itachi will end up blind, unless he gets the eyes of Sasuke, the Hokage said. That's right, however Sasuke must have unlocked his Manjikyu and knowing him, if he ever finds out about it, he probably wouldn't hesitate to end the life of someone close to him, Naruto replied in a serious tone. I'll try to keep to a watch on him. Naruto in the meantime keep those eyes hidden, now even more. Uchiha Madara was one of the strongest shinobis to ever live because of the Sharingan. You still need to learn how to use them so keep it quite okay. The Hokage asked and Naruto nodded and left the room. The Hokage flared his chakra and in front of him appeared an ANBU. Take the one alive to Ibiki and Enko. Also get Tuno Kanta and send him to Ibiki as well, the Hokage ordered. I'm really getting too old for this shit, the Hokage thought. The remaining of the week went by without any trouble at all. However both Naruto and Hinata were extra weary when walking outside of their house. Naruto placed a few layers of defensive seals in his house so his house was very secure, anyone who tried to force their way in would meet a pleasant 100.000 volts trough their skulls. During the last week Naruto and Hinata did a bit of a research about the possible jonins that could their sensei. Also Naruto managed to finish his Hiroshin seals. He pressed harder so he could use it to always be present should Hinata need him at any time. However he still hasn't mastered the technique so it isn't battle ready. Hashtag hashtag flashback hashtag hashtag both of Naruto and Hinata were at home, Hinata was preparing dinner while Naruto was in the living room working on his seals. Hey Hinata-chan, come here, Naruto said and Hinata walked out of the kitchen. Naruto thought she seemed even more beautiful with her hair strapped in a ponytail while wearing a lavender apron. Do you need anything Naruto-kun? She asked. Naruto approached her and gave slight kiss in the lips. I have a present for you, he said with his hands behind his back taunting her to try and take it from his hands. Finally giving up she pouted and Naruto smirked giving her a wrapped gift. She unwrapped it, found a small ring and gasped. The ring was pure shining silver. It had the form of a fox. The ring started with the head of a fox and ended with its tail. A slash N, check profile. It's beautiful, thank you, she said hugging him. Glad you like it, but this ring is special, not only says that I love you but also contains the Hiroshin Shiki formula, which means that if you are in trouble just channel some chakra into the ring and I'll be there in flash, he explained and she gave him a passionate kiss, showing him her undying love. 
Hashtag hashtag and flashback hashtag hashtag. Another thing that Naruto tried to work on during this week was his new Sharingan. He had to admit this new form was fucking awesome. QB also explained the powers he knew of the Manjikyu Sharingan since he saw Madara using them. Hashtag hashtag flashback hashtag hashtag Naruto was lying in his bed trying to fall asleep but was finding it hard. Since the murder attempt on both him and Hinata a couple days ago, even though he secured his house he was always on alert. Deciding to pass the time he went to his mindscape to talk to the QB about his new eyes. Actually Naruto changed his mindscape, it was no longer that old sewer, now it was a vast forest with nearby mountains and plenty of animals so that the QB wouldn't be bored. Hey furball, Naruto said and QB glared at him. What do you want brat, I was trying to sleep, the QB said. I can't sleep, so I just thought you would explain me the new powers I can use with my new eyes. He said. Like I told you, I only seen him use them, I can't even be sure if you can use them. For instance that power you used last time I never saw Madara using it, so more than likely the Manjikyu not always has the same powers. The QB explained. Well that sucks. Naruto replied. It doesn't mean you can't use them. I will explain the powers I saw so listen well. First, one of the power is an extremely powerful genjutsu called Tsukuyumi, God of the Moon. Once you lock eyes with the enemy you can cast the technique and the user is trapped. Inside the technique you are Kami, God, you can create and manipulate everything even time itself. You can make the time pass differently from the outside. It can be 3 days in your technique but in the real world it only has been a couple of seconds, the difference in this time varies with your skill. Also this Jinjutsu is nearly unbreakable. Another power I saw is called Amaterasu, God of the Sun. It's the highest level of Katan Ninjutsu known. With your eyes you can summon or put out the so-called Amaterasu flames. These are black flames that burn anything in its path and don't disappear until the target you want is completely incinerated, it doesn't matter if you even use an Sui Tenjutsu. They never die until the target is gone. The last power and probably the most powerful is a defensive armor with offensive capabilities. It's called Susanu, god of the sea and storms, it creates an humanoid-like shaped armor around you, the more chakra you send, the stronger and bigger it gets, I've seen the Susanu's perfect form and let me tell you it's not something you want to face. This humanoid armor also carries a shield for defensive purposes like deflecting more powerful focused attacks but also a sword for offense. You got all of it. The QB concluded and asked for confirmation. I'm awesome, believe it, Naruto shouted excited with such awesome powers. He still is an idiot, the QB thought. Now you know. Leave. I'm going to sleep, the QB said slash ordered. Hashtag hashtag and flashback hashtag hashtag. With the final week now over, we find Naruto and Hinata at home finishing up their breakfast. Today they would find their teams and meet their Jonin sensei Are you ready Hinata-chan? Naruto asked getting a nod he held her arm and vanished in a lightning shunshin towards the academy. They arrived at the roof not wanting to arouse many questions. They made their way down, to their respective classroom, the room was already filled with their friends, however Iruka sensei still hadn't arrived. Hinata made her up the stairs and sat in the back row. Naruto of course followed her but as he was walking he was met by the glare of one Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke was still pissed by losing to the Dobe, the dead last of the academy. How could trash like that defeat me, an Uchiha? Next time he'll beg for mercy, Sasuke thought smirking. Even thought Naruto had grown up physically but also mentally, he still couldn't resist a few taunts especially from Sasuke, a fellow clan member so to speak. They stayed like this a few minutes glaring at each other until Sasuke had enough and turned away plotting the various ways he could ice his brother. Naruto walked up the stairs to join Hinata when another problem appeared in the form of Inazuka Kiba. Hey Hinata-chan how are you? Kiba asked as he moved to sit next to her. I'm fine Kiba. Stop, that sit is for Naruto-kun, she replied. How come on Hinata-chan? I'm better than him, an alpha, Kiba said rubbing his finger in the bridge if his nose. Kiba of course being from the Inazuka clan had a high sense of pride and manliness due to the fact that is male and heir to the clan. I don't care what you are Kiba and I told you that I like Naruto, she said in a asserting tone. Kiba even took a step back. The shy Hinata he knew was no more. Kiba, stop hitting on my girlfriend, Naruto said as he approached both of them. He passed Kiba who sneered at him and sat next to Hinata and kissed her on the cheek to further make his point on Kiba. Stop pestering her, Kiba yelled, gathering the attention of most of the class and waking up the resident genius. 
Damn it, Kiba, do you have to be so loud? Troublesome, Shikamaru said as he yawned and tried to resume his sleep. Just forget him and go back to your cloud watching, Naruto said. Smartass, Shikamaru replied and went back to sleep. Kiba, Hinata is with me so I would appreciate if you stop bothering us, Naruto said raising his KI making him sweat and furthering his points. On top of Kiba's head was a small white dog called Akameru. He was Kiba's partner to their collaboration ninjutsu. Akameru just said, Alpha, however Kiba didn't listen and tried to punch Naruto. What no one saw coming was that Naruto didn't move an inch. It was Hinata that got up and gave Kiba a juken strike to the chest, leaving him on the ground clutching in pain. Don't you think it was too much Hina-chan, Naruto whispered to her. I'm tired of him always trying to get me to go out with him. Hinata replied getting a nod from Naruto. A slash N, I'm giving Hinata a bit of her personality from the movie Road to Ninja. Someone has to keep Naruto in check. Kiba slowly got up and went to a different seat while glaring daggers at Naruto. A few minutes passed and running was heard in the classroom. Suddenly the door opened and in came running Sakura and Ino. First place, Sakura yelled and trying her best to regain her breath. What are you talking about, my foot was clearly ahead of you, Ino replied. Sakura took her opportunity a run to the seat near Sasuke however it was occupied by Kiba. Kiba, get out so I can sit with Sasuke-kun, the pink banshee said. Kiba simple scowled wondering what Sasuke had that he didn't. Deciding to prove he was alpha male in the class, he jumped into the table and started glaring at Sasuke. Their eyes a few inches apart. Suddenly one of the students in the row below got up and pushed Kiba forward towards Sasuke. To Kiba everything went in slow motion, he was getting closer to Sasuke, too close. Thump. Thump. His face connected with Sasuke, however this connection was rather unfortunate as they connect with their lips. The entire class froze seeing the most desired male which was Sasuke kissing the alpha male. Shikamaru woke up and stared and the event, Choji stopped eating even Shino slightly dropped his glasses. Looks like Kiba finally found his girl, Naruto said loud enough for everyone to hear. The whole male class laughed at the event except the fangirls who were plotting Kiba's murder. Kiba and Sasuke immediately separated and quickly enough Kiba received his faith at the ends of the fangirls leaving him in the ground in a bloody mess. Everyone quieted down after the event and suddenly the front door of the classroom opened and Iruka entered with a stack of papers beneath his arms. Morning class, Iruka said and was surprised he didn't need his patented big head Jutsudo silence his class. After today every one of you are now ninja of the leaf but you mere genin, Iruka started, the difficult part is only beginning. You will now be divided in teams of three members and will be taught by a jonin sensei. We tried to balance the teams. So here they are. Team 1. Naruto at this time dozed off. Team 7, Haruno Sakura, Achiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba, your sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi, Iruka said. Naruto was happy that the Sandame took his suggestion and didn't put him with the Uchiha. Kiba of course wasn't happy he was with the Uchiha, he would need to show him who the Alpha was. Teammate, Uzumaki Naruto, Hyuga Hinata, Abure Shino, your sensei will be Yuhi Kurinai, Iruka said and of course Naruto and Hinata were extremely happy they would be together in their team. Shino was a quiet person, he always kept to himself. He was logical, a good strategist and long-range fighter so it was a well-rounded up team. Hinata was more skilled in taijutsu, Naruto was ninjutsu and they had Shino long-range support. A slash N, even if Hinata was disavowed she still kept her name since she wasn't adopted. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10, Yamanaka Ino, Narashikamaru, Akimichi Chuji, your sensei will Sarutobi Asuma. I will be leaving now, your senseis will be here in a moment, Iruka concluded. Hinata-chan, can I trust Kurinai-sensei? You know her right? Naruto asked. You can, she's a good and kind person but also a strong jonin. She's like a big sister to me. Are you going to tell her about the Sharingan? Hinata replied and asked. I think I should, I mean we are going to a team right? He asked and Hinata nodded. The classroom door opened and two jonin entered. The first one had the traditional jonin clothes. He wore black umbu pants and the jonin flat jacket. He was a tall man with black spiky hair, brown eyes and beard. He also had the 12 Guardian Ninja Sash with the kanji for, fire. This person was Sarutobi Asuma and was the son of the Sandame Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen. The other jonin was a very beautiful woman. She had shoulder-length black hair, red eyes. 
Her regular outfit consists of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible, over this is very broad material which resembles bandages with a pattern on it similar to those of rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages. She is Yuhi Kurinai, Kanoha's Jinjutsu mistress. Team 10, meet at the training ground 12 in 30 minutes, Asuma said and left. Team 8, meet at the training ground 8 in 30 minutes, Kurinai said and also left. Naruto got up with Hinata and Shino and they both walked out. Once outside the classroom, Naruto went to Shino and grabbed him and used lightning shunshin towards the training field. Kurinai was currently waiting at the training ground, she thought it would be a while until they arrived. She sensed chakra around her, she got up and saw their team arriving with the shunshin. She saw it was Naruto that used it. Naruto, you can use the shunshin. She asked, one normally doesn't see a genin using the shunshin. Even though it is a D-rank techniques it uses quite a bit of chakra. Yes I can Kurinai sensei, Hinata-chan can use it also, he replied. What do we do now sensei? Hinata asked. We introduce ourselves. Names, likes, dislikes, dreams for the future, stuff like that. I will go first. My name is Yuhi Kurinai, I like learning new genjutsus and working in my garden, I dislike perverts and traitors. My dream is to the best genjutsu user and a strong kunoichi. You're next Naruto, she said. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, I like Hinata-chan, training and ramen. I dislike traitors and ignorant people. My dream is to be the best Hokage Kanoha as ever seen, he said looking at the Hokage mountain, more specifically at his father's head. He turned around to Hinata. My name is Hyuga Hinata. I like Naruto Kuen, cinnamon rolls, training and flower pressing. I dislike people that hurt Naruto and traitors. My dream is to become a strong and brave Kunoichi and get rid of the Hyuga's pride. She said, spitting the name Hyuga. Even though she hated her father she would do her best to help her former clan. My name is Aburam Shino. I like bugs. I dislike people who mistreat and don't understand bugs. My dream is to become a good clan head. Shino said. Very well, Kurinai started, Naruto and Hinata have already been training for some time so they can work well together I expect the same for you Shino, she said getting a nod from him. I don't expect any type of problems between you so we are officially a team. Now I'm going to test you to see your abilities. It's now 9 o'clock, your objective is to capture me until noon. Got it? She asked, seeing all of them nod she disappeared into the forest. The group came closer and started discussing their plan. Kurinai was hiding in the forest, near a tree using a low-level genjutsu when she saw Naruto approaching at full speed towards her. Figures, the report said he was the dead last but also brash and loud, she thought. Naruto threw a blind punch to which Kurinai dodged and returned his punch. However to her surprise her punch went through him revealing it to be a bug clone. She shook them off and jumped back. She scanned her surroundings and her eyes widened when she saw a fireball coming to her, she jumped to the left where Hinata was and got hit a few times before substituting with a nearby log. Her team regrouped to plot another plan, since the first almost worked. Kurinai was watching even more carefully since she was caught off guard in a henged bug clone. She had a few close chakra points but nothing to major. Kurinai was jumping from tree to tree when against her came a barrage of shuriken, she dodged to the left and engaged with Hinata in taijutsu, noticing she was being overrun. Kurinai jumped back and something caught her ankle. She looked down and saw Naruto pulling her down trapping her. Naruto jumped off the ground and Kurinai was replaced by a log. Damn, she always escapes, Naruto said. If I used real attacks I could easily win, Naruto thought disappointed. Kurinai decided to hide herself in a high-ranking genjutsu while she was resting. Their team was no pushover. She felt her chakra almost all gone, Shino's bugs must have been draining her while she was distracted. She snapped out of her thoughts when she heard. Suetun, Suishuha, exploding water wave, Hinata said. Raitun, Jibashi, electromagnetic murder, Naruto said. The combination of this was an electrified wave of water forcing Kurinai to jump up, Naruto was expecting this and gave her a drop kick sending crashing to the ground. Kurinai got up but suddenly was unable to move, she looked around her and heard. Fuenjutsu, four corner trap seal, Naruto said. They finally caught Kurinai, trapped in a trap seal. This technique works by placing a seal in four places forming a square, when the target is inside, the user can activate and automatically freeze the enemy in place. Congratulations, you are all very good. 
Hinata your taijutsu along with Naruto is impeccable and so is your ninjutsu. Shino you provided long range support and you drained a good chunk of my chakra, your clan skills seem good but you will need elemental ninjutsu as well. Naruto I didn't know you knew fuinjutsu, Kurin I explained. Since we are going to be a team there are a few things I need to tell you. I believe I can trust you, Kurinai sensei and also Shino, Naruto replied getting nods from both of them. First, Kurinai sensei already knows this but not Shino. They say that the Yandame Hokage killed the Kyubi but that is a lie. The Kyubi cannot be killed. It's true that his physical body can be destroyed but he would reform later on. Since he couldn't be killed the Yandame only choice was to seal him inside a newborn baby, me. The Kyubi is trapped here in my gut. Naruto said a bit hesitant about his reaction. I understand if you want to change teams, Naruto said looking at Shino. Nonsense Naruto. For starters I already knew about the Kyubi since my bugs could detect its chakra. Besides I can relate if on a small level. My clan uses bugs that are inside of us as well, so the village always is a bit uncomfortable when dealing with us. Shino in a stoic voice. Thank you Shino, just one thing, the Kyubi it's a Hinata IT. He's a nice guy once you get to meet him, Naruto said and Shino raised an eyebrow. Naruto, how can you say he's a good guy? He nearly destroyed the whole village, Kurinai asked outraged. Sensei, I can't tell you everything but I can tell you that the Kyubi was being controlled by the Sharingan and was forced to attack the village, Naruto said, Kurinai wanted to argue but Naruto wouldn't budge. Speaking of Sharingan, Naruto said and activated his, I'm a Sharingan user. Since we are a team I'm trusting you with this information. I'd like to keep this a secret until I reveal it, Naruto said and Shino kept his stoic face, however Kurinai was doing a very good impersonation of a fish out of water. And Naruto, are you an Achiha? Kurinai asked. I am on my father's side, I'll say no more until I reveal my heritage. Naruto concluded. And you already have it fully matured, Kurinai said. Yup, I awakened when I was five, and when Hinata was kidnapped I killed the kidnapper and got the three tomos, Naruto said and Kurinai's jaw hit the ground. Are you saying that you killed a jonin when you were six years old? Kurinai asked. The only thing I can say is it was pure luck. He underestimated me a paid the price, Naruto explained. Don't worry Naruto, we will keep it a secret, you can trust us, Shino said. Naruto, I have one question. You obviously are very skilled so why were you the dead last? Kurinai asked. What do you mean? It's true that I was the dead last during the academy to hide my true strength but in the last exam I graduated as rookie of the year, Naruto said. B but I read your report and it said that you were the dead last in everything, Kurinai replied confused. I get it, the person that filled the reports must have been an ignorant and since I was the QB, she filled me as dead last probably putting Sasuke as rookie of the year. It doesn't matter, actually it's even better. Now the enemy will underestimate me, Naruto said and Kurinai just shrugged it off. Okay team, meet here tomorrow at 8am. We will train in the morning and do missions in the afternoon. Kurinai said. The day ended with Naruto and Hinata going home, happy that both of them were on the same team. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.